Hi everyone, it's Liam here from biggerplate.com. Today I want to talk about how mind mapping can help you to plan and manage your meetings more effectively while we take a look at the all new MindMeister. We're going to look at the before, during and after stages of a meeting and I want to show you how a single mind map created using software like MindMeister can help to improve collaboration and clarity at every step along the way. So let's jump right in and build a mind map to help us with an upcoming project review meeting. So first of all, let's think about the before stage of the process. When planning any meeting at Bigger Plate, we like to use a simple standard prompt to help us think through some of the meeting essentials before we send out that calendar invite. So in our meeting map, we create a branch called POSTER, which stands for Purpose, Outcomes, Structure, Timing, and Attendees. First, we use the purpose section of the branch to articulate a short purpose statement for the meeting, so we're clear about why a meeting is needed and can share this with others. If you're struggling to write something short and concise here, it might be a red flag for you to think about whether you're about to set up a meeting with mixed or confusing purposes, or perhaps no clear purpose at all, and you don't want to be that person. So take some time to articulate a short purpose statement for the meeting here in the mind map, something that you feel happy to put in front of others to explain why they need to be there. Next, we start to think about the outcomes required for the meeting. It's a good idea to apply some top three thinking to this section so that you don't try to achieve too many things in one meeting and instead you focus on achieving the most important outcomes. If I set up myself or see a meeting with more than three outcomes in this section of the mind map, I'm instantly a bit cautious, so try to be 100% clear on what three things must be delivered by the time the meeting ends and view anything else as a bonus. Once you add these to the mind map, you can use the icon functionality in MindMeister to really make clear the priority outcomes here so that everyone's very focused on achieving those outcomes. Now that we know why we're meeting and what priority outcomes we need to get out of the meeting, we can start thinking about what structure will help us to achieve these outcomes, which essentially will become our agenda. For example, to align with the meeting purpose and achieve the outcomes needed, we're going to structure this meeting in three stages, one for each of the key projects that we need to review, and each review section is going to be broken down into a short briefing from the project owner, then a focused look at any red flag issues, and then a bit of a brainstorm and discussion about solutions, decisions or actions specific to the red flag issues raised. Again, we can use the icons within MindMeister to add a little bit of visual interest to the information rather than your run-of-the-mill standard bullet points. With a basic understanding of how we're going to structure the meeting in order to deliver the outcomes we want, we now think about the timing. Often people send or receive meeting invites with time slots dictating everything else, and the agenda is forced into whatever time slot you were able to grab. However, if we take some time to consider the purpose, outcome and structure before, you're now likely to be much clearer on what kind of time slot is actually needed in order to achieve the outcomes. Finally, with clarity about all of the above, we should now think about who actually needs to be in the room or on the call in that meeting to deliver the outcomes. So having created this simple overview for the meeting, you can share a clear meeting invite with others and could even share this mind map branch itself. The great news is, the work you've done in this mind map so far is not now just thrown aside. The map can now be developed a little bit further in advance of the meeting and can actually be used to manage proceedings during the meeting. We can take the branches from our structure branch and copy and paste them as main branches into the map to form the basis of our agenda. If you're using collaborative mind mapping software like MindMeister, you can actually ask your team members to maybe add and develop areas of the mind map in advance of the meeting related to their particular sections. So all of the information we need for the meeting is already present in this single visual summary when we meet. For example, if this first project was my responsibility, then I might be asked to populate this section of the mind map with the key headlines and the red flag issues for discussion in advance of the meeting, so that others could take a look, familiarize themselves with that information, rather than seeing it for the first time when we meet. 
As well as adding the basic headlines in topics like so, I'm also going to use some additional functionality within MindMeister to bring all of the key documents and information I need right into the mind map as well. So others can review these in advance of the meeting once again, and it means we won't lose time hunting around for documents during the meeting itself. For example, I can attach a, a PDF document related to my project into this mind map branch. So when we reach this section in the meeting proceedings, it means I can jump right from the MindMeister map to the relevant documents and websites elsewhere. And then once we're done reviewing those other documents, come back to the mind map and pick up where we left off using this structured agenda. So imagining that our mind map has been fully populated with key information needed in advance, we now start our meeting, working clockwise around the mind map, exploring each section in turn, following the structure that we've defined previously. What you're now going to see in the meeting is how the mind map can be used to both present information to others, but also engage them as well, capturing their questions, feedback, and ideas live in the mind map as we work through the agenda. As inputs are added, the mind map develops further and goes beyond just being the agenda for the meeting, and it starts to become a dynamic record of the discussion, the ideas, and the decisions that have been made. When the mind map is visible to everyone during the process, whether it's an in-person meeting or a virtual meeting or a hybrid meeting, it provides a fantastic opportunity for people to clarify things right there in real time, as everybody sees the same information as it evolves and has the opportunity to therefore correct, edit and improve things as needed, avoiding some of the debate later about what was or was not said or agreed. When it comes to defining and assigning tasks during a meeting, if you're using MeisterTask in conjunction with MindMeister, then you can assign tasks to team members live during the meeting within the mind map, so that everybody then goes away with a clearly defined set of actions, which they can then review, monitor, and move forward using their own MeisterTask boards. In this way, the mind map once again acts as the collaborative visual summary for everybody of what has been decided and discussed, but also provides simple, accessible signposts that can take people off to the key places they need to go for more detail or more information if needed. Once the meeting concludes, you've got a ready-made record of the discussion that can be instantly shared with others who might need to know what happened. You can invite other people into the mind map and give them viewing or editing permissions as required. Alternatively, if you don't want people in the MindMeister map itself, you can easily export the map to a range of different file types to make that information accessible to others who may not have or actually need MindMeister access. So there you have it, a very quick look at the ways the all new MindMeister can help you plan and manage more collaborative and effective meetings using just a single mind map. To try out the all-new MindMeister for yourself, head on over to mindmeister.com. For a huge range of resources to help you go further with mind mapping and MindMeister, head on over to biggerplate.com and don't forget to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube.